Let's turn now to our opening hymn, which was number 186, I've Found a Friend, 186 in the hymnal. slide please and we'll, let's repeat this uh, Psalm 11824 together please this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it rejoice the
Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath morning. We gather here together to worship you. Lord, we ask your presence here. All glories to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I want to welcome you all this morning. Let's see. People are still coming in. That's a good thing. <laughs> good morning, George. Good to see you this morning. You have with you your friend? Yes, my friend. It's my friend, Ruben. Ruben. Good morning, Ruben. Glad to have you this morning. You've wish worshipped with us before. I remember you from before. Glad to have you again. And then we have Lucinda. Who do you have with you? Yes, Sister Dan. Hi. You've been here before, too, I believe. It's been a while since we've seen you, so welcome. And then we have a gentleman way in the back back there, and I tried to catch your name, but I, I didn't. It starts with the E. Esmond. Esmond. Glad to have you this morning. You're visiting from where? Anywhere, everywhere. Anywhere, everywhere. <laughs> Uh, you're a teacher at uh, the junior college in Santa Rosa, is that right? Yes. Well, good. Glad to have you this morning. That much I gleamed. Anyone else here? Good morning, Bobby and uh, Bonnie. No Dick this morning, or is he next door? No. Okay. Well, tell him we miss him, okay? All right. Let's see. I'm going with announcements. Uh, uh, each of you received probably a little card in your bulletin like this this morning. It has uh, English and Korean on it. And I think I did ask the pastor to, but he's busy, <laughs> to let us know what's going on here. So, if you would. Oh, before my sermon. Oh, before your sermon? Okay. Put that card aside. We'll get back to it. All right. Um, if you have praise and prayer requests, don't forget these little uh, lined papers in there. I'll write them down and hand them to the usher this morning. Um, we have a Redwood Camp meeting coming up this uh, on the 18th to the 27th of July. Uh, there's probably still time to sign up for that. Uh, if you've never been, uh, it's well worth going. Uh, I've been to the Soquel camp meeting down there, and that one's kind of kind of dry in many ways. I'm sure spiritually it's very much alive. But when you go to the red, yeah, hot, because uh, Soquel I did it many times as a kid. And... Uh, and we now have the Redwood Camp meeting up, which is up in the Redwoods. It's beautiful up there along the um, Eel River. And uh, just a wonderful place to be underneath the trees and uh, just a place, a nice place to camp. And uh, the sermons are outstanding. Believe me, they really are. They, they uh, ask some of our best pastors to speak up there. So... Um, Just local stuff, um, Wednesday night camp, uh, prayer meeting, not camp meeting, prayer meeting uh, here at the church at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. And then our worship schedule on the back of our bulletin. Uh, is June 29th, we have David Lee, MD, which is, has to do with the little card and a Pastor Will. Announce that at that time. Um, then um, on the 29th, which is part of this car, we're going to have fellowship uh, worship with our brothers and sisters next door, the Korean church, and we will also have potluck. So don't forget to bring something if you stay. Uh, today, um, Larry told me they're going to run a video uh, for the uh, Daniel Revelation seminar study. It's on chapter 12. Um, is there anything you need to mention on that other than that? Uh, just please stay if you are interested in studying uh, prophecy. We've had uh, a number of folks staying on the Sabbath afternoon, primarily with the book of Daniel so far. I picked this one out because uh, having a video helps us to be focused, but also Daniel 12, the 
the speaker wraps up the whole book of Daniel, so he helps to make the whole thing comprehensible and put it together. Mm -hmm. So it's a good uh, good thing to, to pay attention to. It is on the internet too. Uh, it's Pastor uh, Stephen Bohr on Daniel 12. But please say this afternoon if you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, um, at this time, um, we can start visiting um, uh, Fenderson, Roger Fenderson. And um, they, his wife asked that we just wait a couple weeks, but now that couple of weeks has gone by. So I have an address for Roger up in Cloverdale a Health Center. Um, and you can get the address from me after church if you'd like. Or, uh, yeah, I won't have you write it down now. Probably after church. If you'd like to visit Roger, you can go ahead and visit Roger at this time. I'm sure he would like a visit. Uh, let's see where we are. Our scripture reading this morning will be from Ruth, the book of Ruth, chapter 3, verse 9. Verse 9. And he said, Who are you? So she answered, I am Ruth, your maidservant. Take your maidservant under your wing, for you are a near kinsman. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading this morning. Sounds like uh, she was a distant cousin. Is that right? By marriage. Huh? By marriage. Thank you. I was looking for an answer. <laughs> so, all right, by marriage. All right. Distant relative. By marriage. Okay. At this time, we will have our praises and prayer requests. <laughs> no one? Oh, there we go. I saw a hand over here. Okay. Yes, Lucinda. Oh, just continue prayers for Devin. They missed that. He, you know, he had fallen a couple weeks ago. Yes. Oh, actually fractured his L1 and L2 in his back. Mm -hmm. And oh. then just did have surgery just for safety. But, I mean, just his memory just gets worse after everything. And yes. he's in, currently in rehab, but, you know, there were some challenges. And yes. It's very... Taking this call, as you will know. <laughs> yes, I do know. Um, Stella, and then we'll have, I saw Patty over here, I think. Um, prayers for safety as I'm traveling this week. Um, I'm driving my sister up to UC Davis uh, Medical Center, and she has two days of. Um, specialist appointments and mm -hmm. I'm driving back mm -hmm. and so um, I'm not the world's best driver anymore. we do worry about your driving <laughs> yeah. seriously and um, yeah especially at night um, and also I'm thankful that I didn't break my ankle this morning when I fell no, no. So, because it could easily have happened Let's see, hands over here. I saw uh, Patty, and then we'll go with Bonnie. I'd like to pray for Debbie. Yes. Neighbor. Her neighbor. Your neighbor, yeah. Muscular sclerosis. She's got bed sores, mm -hmm. liver problems, mm -hmm. and kidney problems. Ooh. And she lost his kidneys. And she's very weak. Not doing well at all. Okay. Uh, Bonnie, I, I think that's it. 
Bonnie? Hello, yes. My husband and I got home last night from celebrating our 41st anniversary, which is a miracle itself. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the East Canyon and the great sequoias. And, and, you know, being there in nature where it's just so grand, everything is so grand, is such a good reminder of the greatness and hugeness of God mm -hmm. and that he doesn't give up on us. He's so grand and so great. Mm -hmm. And we're so small, and he takes notice. Yes. Isn't that something? How about that? Dana. Uh, both the prayer, uh, prayer and praise, uh, I don't know if any of you know what happened to Mary. She had what was described by some as a heart attack. I don't know if it was a heart attack or her heart just stopped. And uh, I think she was in, I thought she was in Mendocino. But anyway, she's, she is in Kaiser. Kaiser here in Santa Rosa, and I guess when EMTs arrived, she gave her uh, CPR and, and broke her couple of ribs, one of which punctured her lung. Oh. So she's she's in the hospital. She's, uh, I saw her yesterday, late last, yesterday afternoon. She is such a tough cookie. I can't believe how all that could happen to her, and she was, lying there like almost like nothing had happened but, um, I, I don't know how long she's going to be in the hospital she's in her 427 she was yesterday and uh, just prayer for her praise that she made it through and uh, also uh, praise Jerry and I are going to have our 23rd uh, wedding day. Somebody asked me yesterday, and I came up with the right answer, 23rd. <laughs> that confirms it. Now, we traditionally forget, so it could be tomorrow. Both of us will forget. <laughs> Brenda. I don't praise that I have a lot going on at home and at work this week, and I was feeling really stressed, so I just kept asking God to help me. Yeah. Just, just went through. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amen. Sir? This, this phrase, uh, my dental hygiene students, we were, I uh, took them to Mexico, in Sonali area for about two weeks and we saw 167 kids, mostly orphans. And wow. There. So we took care of the teeth. And there. Oh, amen. Yeah, there's probably a lot of teeth that need to be taken care of because they don't have the dental hygiene like we have. Uh, Mary Ann, and then, uh, yeah, go ahead, Mary Ann. I'll catch up. I want to thank the Lord for friends, especially for Stella, who has been walking with me. Yes, she has. And I'm feeling much stronger, and I um, pray that you'll keep me in your prayers as I continue my journey towards better health. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, Lorena, and then we'll get to Kate back there. Lorena? For my family, my children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, mm -hmm. and they will come to know the Lord. Amen. And we all have children out there like that, that those who have children. Kate? Um, I have a praise. I've been praying a lot for, I pray for my clients before I go work with them. Mm -hmm. And one of them is, the right word would be obstreperous especially with his language. Hmm. Dad. It's a word I haven't heard before. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, but um, I've, I've just been praying and praying for this guy. And yesterday, and I couldn't stay. I was supposed to do um, like a 38-hour gig over at uh, the house yesterday. Okay. And I went in. It started at 6 a.m. But I went in, and his entire attitude has completely changed. Ooh. And I was just totally blown away by that. Praise God. Praise God for that. And I'm just really grateful for that. And then also God's been, you know, chinking in my brain a lot, helping me to change mm -hmm. a lot of my ideas mm -hmm. and attitudes and mm -hmm. thoughts. And I'm really grateful for that very much. But I also want to um, I want to put up a prayer, especially that I really think that we need to have like an amen medical clinic 
down here in this area. Mm -hmm. And Amen clinics are great. They help bring people together, and they serve the poor in our area. And I volunteered for one up in Ukiah a couple of years ago, and it was a wonderful experience. And they have medical and dental services for people that can't afford it. So I like to set in prayer. Mm -hmm. Maybe something like that could happen down here in this mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do have one in Santa Rosa once a year. Oh, we do. Santa Rosa Church. Oh, Santa Rosa Church. Yeah. Yeah, they're wonderful because I was, I went down to one that was in Oakland and it was it was a wonderful yeah, experience. Oh good. So it does happen in our area. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Stella. Um I want to thank God for me keeping my mouth shut this morning after that woman who was supposed to be controlling her dog didn't and knocked me down and um, hurt my ankle. But I didn't say anything bad to her. <laughs> and um, that's a miracle because I have a mouth. <laughs> Anyone else? I think we're done. All right. Those who are able, please kneel with me this morning. God is love. We thank you, Father, for who you are as we come before your mercy seat this morning and we've brought our praises and our prayer requests. But it's not just about our praises and our prayer requests. Lord, it's about who we serve. Because you are a great God, as I've mentioned this morning. And sometimes we can see the grandeur in your creation. And we are part of that creation, yet we are so small. And yet you take notice, even down to the sparrows, even down to every hair on our head, you know what the count is. Lord, and as we bring our praises and prayer requests this morning to you, we know that you will answer even before we ask. Because we find that in your word. We thank you, Father. Father, as we have brought our prayer requests and our praises this morning, we want to remember we've asked about our neighbors. Lord, we do care about our neighbors, and so we ask that uh, you'll um, touch their lives, and may we be a witness for you, that uh, you may shine, that you may be glorified. Lord, um, you've, we've asked for traveling mercies as we travel from place to place, and that means each one of us, especially if we drive. Lord, we ask that uh, you'll take care of us and put us under the shadow wing there. Lord, uh, we have uh, situations at our job that sometimes are quite stressful. We pray, Father, that uh, you will iron those things out as you have in Brenda's life. Lord, and uh, we want to remember Mary, who has uh, had, as far as we know, a heart attack. We thank you, Father, for bringing her through. And uh, we will see her again uh, in a week or two. Lord, we just thank you that uh, she's still here with us. We ask, Father, that you also be with her family. She always has prayer requests for her family, and Tony and uh, Teresa and us, uh, and so on. Lord, as uh, we ask for our children, and our children, Lord, are special to us. And many of us do have children that are not here in the church or in the faith. And we pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit may continue to speak to them in a very special way, that you will woo them into a relationship with you and with us as um, believers. Lord, we thank you for uh, friendship that uh, come and visit like in Stella and Mary Ann's case. We ask, Father, that uh, you will continue to uh, encourage uh, 
Stella and Marianne as they, Marianne is on to uh, a life of recovery and better health. I want to remember Don and his family. Lord, you know, uh, he is lonely without Carol. It's been a time now, Lord, and uh, we miss her too, so uh, we ask that you'll be with Don. Uh, we thank you for the his family members who take care of him, and may they uh, continue to do so, that Don may do well. Lord, as we have brought these prayer requests, we just thank you for listening. Lord, as we move forward into our um, main service now, as we uh, get ready to give offering this morning, we ask your blessing upon the offering this morning that it may go in the direction you desire for it to go to help this three angels mission to go forward throughout this world. Lord, as I think of uh, the pastor, Pastor Shin, as he brings us the message this morning, we ask, Father, that our that you will speak through him and may our hearts be open to receive the message that you have for each one of us this morning. We thank you, Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Bonnie, for that piece this morning. And at this time, we will turn our time over to the pastor and God's word. And the title of his sermon this morning is Spread the Corner of Your Garment Over Me. So once again, I welcome everyone, our church family and visitors this morning. As you know, on uh, fifth Sabbath, usually we have uh, four fifth Sabbath of the month um, in a year. So next, next week, falls on 5th Sabbath, so as used to be, um, we have a joint worship with Korean brothers and sisters. And uh, I invited uh, the guest. Uh, his name is uh, David Usak Lee. He's a main speaker um, from, well, actually the Korean church is a Friday night vesper, so starting Friday night until a Sunday morning. But uh, as a, a part of our um, worship, he's going to speak uh, 
Fasting, Prayer, and, uh, and Mind of Christ is the title of uh, next week. And especially Saturday afternoon, Sabbath afternoon, we have only English session, so no translation uh, got involved. So English speakers, you are more than welcome to stay there. So we have potluck, join potluck. And um, stay there, and uh, our title is uh, Flesh in the Epistle to the Romans According to Addiction, Psychiatry, and True Willpower. Interesting topic. So more than welcome to stay uh, with us next week, starting probably uh, sometime uh, 1 o'clock, between 1 o'clock and 1.15. It depends on how long sermon he would have in the Sabbath worship, but uh, some, somewhere in 1 o'clock, 1.30. So stay there, maybe one hour. Probably after a session, you may ask some personal questions on your medical issues and health issues as well. So everybody can be benefited. And Saturday evening and uh, Sunday morning, he is talking about uh, reversing type 2 diabetes, mainly in Korean, but God is going to give you some uh, the gift of tongue, and you can understand. <laughs> so, yeah, let's see. He is uh, bilingual, so maybe he can. If English speakers showed up so many, and maybe we can change the format. So, hopefully, uh, we can get all benefited by his visiting and God's message and health message as well. The title is, uh, Spread the Corner of Your Garment Over Me. I'd like to uh, begin with a word of prayer before we start. Dear Lord, thank you again for this beautiful Sabbath. At this time, just speak to us and help us to prepare your words and receive your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as a series of Ruth, the book of Ruth, very short uh, chapters. How many chapters in the Ruth? Only four, right? So this is the uh, third chapter we are visiting. And um, the background of this story, Ruth, book of Ruth, the chapter one, the background of this chapter is some story from the road. The family is going back to the motherland, Bethlehem. And chapter two, background of this story is, is a field. Now Ruth, he's, she is collecting some uh, grains, spread out um, after harvest and collecting some grains. And chapter 3, the background of chapter 3 is abundance of harvest, like a storage house. So more, the blessing is coming to this family. So turn your... Um, your Bible, chapter 3 and verse 1, just when I read uh, NIV, and just follow me. Chapter 3, verse 1, starting, One day Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, should I not try to find a home for you, where you will be well provided for? Verse 2, Is not Boaz, with whose servant girls, you have been a kin, kinsman of ours tonight. He will be renewing barley on the threshing floor. The background is the threshing floor, more abundant, uh, the food and blessing. Verse 3, wash and perfume yourself and put on your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. 
So now the uh, Naomi, the mother-in-law, kindly enough saying something to her uh, daughter-in-law. This is what she do, and step by step, and advi advises her. In verse 5, I'll do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in a good spirits, he went over to lie down at far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man, and he turned and discovered a, whim, a woman lying at his feet. What a, um, how can I say this? What an alarming uh, scene is this, right? Can you imagine that you are lying down as a man and there's a something on his feet and there's a woman <laughs> on cover, wow. And verse nine it says, who are you? Look at this uh, question, who are you? God is going to ask you, who are you as well? What would be your answer? When God asks you, who are you? What will be the best answer to describe or introduce yourself? He asked, and this is what Ruth said to him. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. And she said something like this. This is the, um, the words, the uh, expression that I've taken for my sermon title. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a kinsman redeemer. The word, your garment, actually the word, the corner of your garment, when a woman uh, wears a skirt, the corner, at the edge, corner of the garment, and the corner of your garment over me, the word, kanaf, is the word corner, garment, skirt. And also, it is wings. Interesting. You know the birds, the eagles, the wings? The same word, kanaf, corner of the garment and the wings. You know this story? Oh, her name is Amanda Eller, about uh, one month ago. She got lost, one of the islands of Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii yet, but uh, I was told there are uh, many islands, but inhabitable islands only uh, seven, so one of those she visited. She's from Hawaii, so she knows, she knows better than most of us. She just simply wanted to uh, take a hike, and she left behind her cell phone and uh, some valuables in the car, but uh, she couldn't get back. She got lost where to go. So she's been lost for 17 days, and finally she was located from the helicopter and got back. It, it's, it's, uh, end up with a um, kind of a good ending uh, story. And she, she had to uh, cover with the leaves and something, and also she, she had to survive. So whatever she sees, and she has to uh, eat. Something like the moth on the hand, she picked up and ate it. <laughs> and some uh, berries, and she goes wild. But anyway, um, very uh, good news that uh, because of um, the family hired uh, a private helicopter, 
and somehow she had to, uh, um, she took a rest in the open field so that the helicopter, the pilot can locate her. And as you can see, uh, not very well clothed, and she lost her shoes because um, the terrain, uh, heavy rain just swept away her shoes as without shoes, and she broke her ankle. But uh, she is a, a yoga uh, instructor. Thank you and also a uh, physical therapist, yeah, something like that. So she, she knew enough to survive, how to uh, fix her uh, wounds right there. Wow, in her case, maybe helicopter, wings of helicopter, if I can say, <laughs> um, just covered her and brought her back to the safe place. In the Bible, there are many expressions related to either um, clothes or the wings, starting with Genesis 3.21. You know, the first story uh, of how God prepared skin dress for Adam and Eve, right? The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. When you read uh, this story, when I first read this story, I thought, oh, okay, that's, uh, it's better than uh, olive leaves. It's durable and it can last long. But no, it's a deeper meaning. To get the skin, skin of an animal, some animal has to die, right? It represents Jesus, his grace, his garments. He had to die for us. Exodus 19, 4. You have seen what I did to Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. So same word, eagles' wing here is a kanaf, the same words, the corner of the garments. And it means a protection, right? No doubt about it. And Deuteronomy 32, uh, verse 11, as an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. I believe uh, this expression symbolically uh, teaches us some God's special protection. Same words, kanaf, the garment, the corner of the garments, same words, kanaf. Now uh, it says uh, wings right here. This is all Old Testament. In New Testament, Revelation 12, 14, Remember this expression? But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place when she is nourished for time and times and half time, half a time from the presence of the serpent. Mm -hmm. So now the wings, wings of a great eagle, it's the same expression. It's protection, cover something. Someone pictured um, this beautiful, the, is it bald eagle? Why is it called bald? Still some hair, some feather <laughs> on the head, right? White, also called a white eagle? Okay. Okay, whatever it is called, it's a beautiful uh, picture. Uh, 1782 is the emblem of the United States, America, because of its uh, long life, great strength, or majestic looks, and also because it was then delivered that to exist only on this continent. So this, this became uh, the uh, emblem of the United States <laughs> since 1782, for a long time ago. Back then, they believed that this eagle only exists in this continent. 
I don't know, probably the other places uh, now they can find. But anyway, when you see this eagle, it reminds me of some power, majesty, protection. Eagle is the king of the sky, I guess. King of the land is what? No, human. <laughs> yeah, lions, right? Uh, tigers like them. But in the air, the eagle is the king. No birds can compete uh, this kind of uh, bird. This one, it is called golden eagle. I believe a more ferocious eagle than the bald eagle. Do you know how big is the, this bird? Guess what? The wingspan, how long? Seven. Oh, that's close. Yeah, two meter, even some, uh, occasionally there's a report, 2.8 meters. That's uh, about uh, seven feet up to a uh, nine feet, right? Pretty, pretty big. Do you know how big is the uh, claw is? Yeah, it is pretty big, right? This big. This is a uh, uh, adult pants and just cover. And very powerful, uh, what, what is this, nail? What is it called? It? Claw? Talon. And it is said, uh, um, when eagle attacked, and it can broke animal's bone. And most animal, they, uh, they are killed and uh, died of over uh, bleeding. So lose a lot of uh, the blood and uh, they, they can die easily. And like this, this picture says, little fox is an easy prey for eagles. Very, very uh, strong. It is not necessary to turn on the uh, audio, but it might be a little bit helpful because when you see some dull video clips, and, but uh, don't push too, too high. Uh, this is the eagle, how powerful this bird is. Can you see it right this? This, this guy is going to catch a lamb or goat. Catch that. And flying over to the cliff and on the way to its home, its nest. Can you believe that? Probably the, this animal, uh, the neck is broken already, so dead. So this is a nest and landed on its nest. So when I saw this uh, video clip and don't even attempt to uh, mess around this eagle, okay? They can attack you. <laughs> Another picture, it reminds me of how the wings of the eagle is this chicken hen. Can you see how many? One, two, three, four, maybe five, I don't know. So I sent this picture to my friend, one of my friends, and he said he cried because this hand reminds of his mother. Yeah, and reminds of uh, Jesus, I think. Can you catch the Bible says about the hand somewhere? Yes. Do you remember? When Jesus says, I would, I would draw you under my, my wings like another man, but you would not. Exactly. You're right, Kate. Matthew 23 and verse 7. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you 
who will kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together, as a hen gather her chicks under her wings, but they are so disobedient. I visited uh, yesterday the Santa Rosa um, Kaiser to see uh, Mary. I call her Mother Mary, <laughs> the same name. This is picture that I got. She put uh, all kinds of flowers. <laughs> Because she was supposed to be a flower girl the same day, yesterday at 4 at Mendocino when uh, Tony's son's wedding. So she missed that. So she practiced or just exercised the flower girl and on the floor flowers and on the bed flower and the, uh, some wreaths like that. And even the, the nurse came in and um, this is a watermelon, something, uh, I don't know, the soda. And the male nurse asked them, uh, why don't they have a toast? <laughs> so <laughs> they just did it. <laughs> As if uh, they were in a wedding like that. But when I heard the, the whole story, it could have been much, much worse. Because she was with her son, Tony, in Mendocino because of the wedding. And she checked the blood pressure, something wrong, something goes wrong. So that heart attack happened and they, they could call uh, the paramedics and paramedic came, came in and they began to uh, CPR for 10 minutes. And finally, um, they, they had to uh, break, I guess, uh, five ribs, one of which is uh, just uh, caused a, a long collapse. But she came back after 10 minutes, very hard labor like that. No brain damage, right? That's, that's awesome. You know, they asked, apparently they asked, do you want to let her go? Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. And paramedic asked um, either Tony or Tina that should it let her go? No. Tina, wasn't there. Oh, Tina wasn't there. And he said, no, you got to do this. And they began to uh, resuscitate her and she came back. And she is very lively and very strong woman. And even she refused to take any uh, catheter because uh, she wants to get up out of the bed and go to the the restroom so that she can uh, become more stronger and oh that's a wonderful story so at the Mendocino hospital they uh, be, uh, decided to airlift her to uh, Santa Rosa and went into uh, ICU and now um, I believe a 427 if they moved their room but uh, it's kind of uh, a good reminder of God is protecting us. Wisdom wings cover its wing and she could uh, survive. She turns 93 in September. She was born in uh, 1926. So amazing, praise the Lord. Continue, Ruth 3, uh, 11, and now my daughter, do not fear. I will do you all that you request. For all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. Guess what? She, uh, she's getting closer and closer to uh, this man, Boaz. Never met before. And she was afraid, but this is the, the uh, comments from uh, this gentleman. You are a virtuous woman. Virtuous woman, the original language it says, Isha Hayel. Isha Hayel. Isha means a woman, wife, woman of wives. Isha Hayel. Physical strength and wealth. But does it familiar with you? Isn't it familiar with you? Isha Hayel. Yeah. Last time, the, the, when we covered the second uh, chapter, Gibor Hayel is the, the word 
mentioning the man Boaz. Now Ishahael mentioning the, this woman. Seems like oh, what a good couple of those two. <laughs> Something is going to happen. <laughs> See, Gippor Hail, champion, mighty man, physical strength and wealth. Now Isha Hail, woman, physical strength and wealth and valor. Like Isha Hail, the virtuous woman. English translation as a virtuous woman, but it has a deeper meaning when you study uh, the book of Ruth in original language. And Gippor Hail, Isha Hail, matches well together. And this is what he says, Ruth 3.13, stay this night, stay this night. When you think of night, some, some of them probably don't like night. They prefer uh, days, the daytime. But in our lives, occasionally, we had to go through the night, night of our lives. Very hard time, nothing to do with it. But when you create some life, it needs night. Can you, can you say that? It needs night. When uh, the little chick, right, from, from the egg, it needs night. How many days? Is it 21 days or 28 days? Three weeks, 21 days? And a baby should be born in, from the mother's womb. It's kind of night. They need the night to create a life. One example is that uh, the Jacob experienced that severe night, the death and uh, the life. When his life is on balance, he had to go through this night, crucial night. Genesis 32, verse 26, it says, Then the man said, Let me go. The angel, we believe that there was Jesus, he said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob refused and resisted. Jacob replied, I won't let you go unless you bless me. And verse 27, out of sudden, out of nowhere, he's asking the same question that we read in the beginning of this sermon. And the man asked him, what is your name? Out of sudden, why does he have to ask the name? Who, you, who are you? Like, what is your name? And he said, Jacob, he answered. But this story also reminds me of another incident. Because when he was asked who you are, he had to give some other name. Do you remember that? Yeah. Interesting. Notice this. This is a Genesis 32 and verse 27. And quite opposite. Now Genesis 27 and verse 32. When uh, uh, Jacob was there to his father Isaac, right? And the same question. And his father Isaac says to him, who are you? What's your name? Who, you, who are you? So he said, I'm your son, your firstborn, Esau. The wrong name, right? But now it is time to restore his identity. I am Jacob, not Esau. The, through uh, Isaac uh, asked uh, the question and now through uh, Jesus he can restore the same uh, the, the name that uh, Jacob has to be a uh, Jacob and now he's going to give him uh, another um, another name Israel after that so everybody has to pass the night either you like it or not and this is what the Bible says. Joseph waited how many years? 13 years. At the age of 17 and all the way through 30 when he became the uh, prime minister like that. Abraham waited 25 years to get the firstborn, the son, the legitimate son. And Moses, how many years he had to wait? And 40 years in the wilderness to, to prepare the exodus. 
And also Jesus waited 30 years to begin his public life, to begin his uh, ministry. So when you go through some night and you are all colleagues of those at the same school of, it is called the wilderness. My friend, are you going through some difficult times in your lives? Difficult time in your life. And you are struggling with these issues through the night. There's just some good news for you. Psalm 46 and verse 5. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. She will help her when morning dawns. And also Psalm 108, verse 2, wake up. And he said, I will make the dawn with my song. Now, uh, back to uh, Ruth 2.20. The Lord blessed him. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, he has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead, she added. That man is our close relative. He is one of our kinsmen redeemers. Remember that? God is going to do something for us we are while we are experiencing our darkest night. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. In the Bible, there is a word, has said. It is really difficult to translate a single word, an English word. It is goodness, kindness, mercy, devotion, unchanging love. All combined, that's has said. For example, Isaiah 54, verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love, that's has said, for you will be will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. And just this is my closing, Ruth 3:18. Remember this verse. Then Naomi said, Wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens. For the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. Remember, God is working hard for you. And he gave up his rest because he wants to give us rest for us. Sometimes we are so irritated in front of what's happening to my lives, to your lives. But stand still and wait, and wait and see how God miraculously saved you and rescued you and give you blessing. Oftentimes, our tragedy, we thought that this is tragedy, this is bad thing. But easily enough, the tragedy becomes our blessing at the end because God is working so hard. Remember this, everything, God is in control, and all we have to do is that put your concerns, your worries, everything, into his holy hands. And let's see how our loving God is going to work for us. Okay, Sherry Rice, and uh, let's have a closing hymn together. Marvelous Grace 109.
is greater than all our sin. Sin and despair like the sea waves call, threaten the soul with infinite loss. Grace that is greater, yet grace and call, points to the refuge of mighty grace. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace, freely bestowed on all who Let's pray. Grace, grace, God's grace. Our loving Father, we humbly ask your grace in our lives. Help us to see your has said unfailing love. Give us patience how you are working on our, on our lives. The grace of the Lord, our Savior, unmeasurable love of our Father, and the communion of the Spirit, our helper and advocator, be with us from now to the eternity. Amen. God loves you, and so do I. Have a happy Sabbath, everyone.